Hello guys, it's Girl Got Game, and welcome to another Gander video. It's been a hot minute, but I'm actually going to do a Gander video today. <laughs> today we are checking out the demo for 111, a horror detective visual novel. So, yeah, as I was saying, it's been a hot minute. I was contacted about this game back in December, and uh, a lot has happened... IRL for me since then, so I've kind of fallen off my gander train, but I'm hoping to get back into things, and uh, what better way than to start with this? So yeah, as I mentioned, I was contacted by Vivi Latvia. Um, he contacted me about this. He is actually a League of Legends Twitch streamer, and this is his first visual novel that he's been working on. And he contacted me about it, asked if I wanted to check out the demo, and I said, sure, it looks really interesting. Um, it's available in both Russian and English. It's fully voice acted in Russian, I believe. And uh, this is just the demo version so far. I believe the full release is um, end of April. Let me just check real quick, actually. Yes, April 24th, 2023 is the planned release date for this, so... Keep an eye out for that. I'll have a link to the demo and, uh, yeah, to the demo on Steam down below so you can check it out if you guys would like to. But let's just jump in. The story for this is it begins with the main character reflecting on his hermit like and bleak lifestyle. As a result, he decides to make a change to get out of his house and meet some new people. He gets the chance to attend an unusual speed dating event, not in the city center but at a local landmark on the city outskirts. The location is a beautiful lighthouse located in a rocky area. It usually attracts tourists, but it's springtime, known for its stormy weather. So there's our lighthouse. And as I understand it, you can romance everybody that you meet in this game. So we got options. Let's go meet everybody. Ooh, there's a difficulty as well. Hmm, what does that mean? Well, you won't have any hints during the game. Prepare yourself for a real test during the passage, or the character karma menu will be available. You can save whenever you want during the game. Hmm. No saving, eh? Interesting. Well, let's go normal. <laughs> a minute for pain. In this world, you can search for everything except love and death. You will find themselves when the time comes. Anyway, the art style is beautiful. Let me just... Is there a way to make the text faster? No. Okay. Well, I leaned over my creation for the hundredth time, ran my fingers over the joints, checking its strength. The birdhouse had a feeder, a swing, a round entrance, and a varnished roof with wood burn carving. Okay, enter doesn't work. Probably gonna click then. There we go. I took a brush to go over the paint along the seams when suddenly the phone rang. Oh, it's interactable. Nice. I like that. Hugh Brown listening. Hmm. Okay. I thought I had turned the voice acting off. Oh, it went back. Okay. I had turned it off. I guess it reactivated itself. That's fine. It means we can put the music up a little bit too. That should be good. Okay. Um, there we go. Hello, Hugh. How are you? Oh, I'm not early. I always forget about the stupid time zone difference. Hello? Oh. I don't know why it kind of gets stuck sometimes. My mom called me yesterday, complained that you would not come to the birthday party. Hugh, we rarely see each other. <laughs> yes, and I'm fine with it. Oh, I would like to, but I have a lot of work. 
Hugh, you can't get stuck in business like that. When was the last time you rested, hmm? So tell me, what did you do last weekend? I bet 20 bucks that another birdhouse was pounding. Come to us! By the way, Simone will be too. Do you remember my friend from the wedding? You seem to get along with her. <laughs> Thanks for the warning. Now definitely no. I knew there was a catch somewhere. Phew. Well, it can't be like that. Do you know that according to research, married people live 10 to 15% longer? I will send you an article from the magazine. A knock on the door saved me from the details. I interrupted the conversation. I went to the door and picked up the mailing list. I took the newspaper, ran through the list of jobs and vacancies. There was something new on the back. Speed dating. How is it possible? Fate or just a funny coincidence? If my sister lived next door, I would know exactly whose tricks these are. How long do they live in marriage? 10% longer? They should better calculate what part of life is spent searching for that one and how much nerves are lost in the process. On the other hand, the paint on the birdhouse will dry for at least a day. Get the stupid thoughts out of my head and stay at home. Break free and try to find a partner on speed dating. Okay, this is probably, like, a quick ending, so I'm going to do it. Crimson Thunderstorm. Eleven people were trapped. It's a good thing I didn't go. The next morning, I went out on the porch as usual to pick up the newspaper. To my surprise, I saw a picture of the very place where yesterday's dating session had taken place on the front page. Below was a vivid picture of an old lighthouse, and in large letters there was the title Crimson Thunderstorm. I hurriedly flipped the page to the next one and ran my eyes through the lines. A massacre. Five victims, men and women, killer not found, two missing people, their portraits and names. I could have been there! I could have been one of them, and my friends would have found out I'm dead through the newspapers. The world has gone mad. The smooth surface of the morning coffee suddenly started to be interrupted by small waves. My hands were shaking nervously, and I rushed to the shower to wash the terrible news out of my mind. News achievement! Thanks for playing! We did it! <laughs> we saved ourselves! Yay! The end. Good job. Okay. So I made an autosave. That's nice. Okay, it does. That's just our ending. Okay. Unfortunately. I guess I'll just start from the beginning. I also can't see how to skip. Usually, it's control. But not this time, it doesn't seem. Okay, that's what we just have gone through. Okay, that's how we get... This is not activatable yet. Okay. Yeah, still can't figure out how to skip. So... Um, I'll do what I did last time. I'll just skip ahead do, 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 till we get to our option okay speed dating break free find a partner let's go and just like that we're on a train the train arrived at the station right on time it's nice that at least something in our world remains punctual the driver honked his horn and i began my trip to the lowlands the narrow river was crossed by an old stone bridge the once beautiful structure was in a bad need of restoration. The stones were quite worn out, and centuries-old mud had settled between them. The local authorities seemed to have no intention to repair the bridge, so that its archaic nature and look would attract tourists. There were dozens of tourist cars with foreign license plates in the parking lot. 
the wind blew, and I pulled up the collar of my favorite and only jacket. No competition. Perhaps I should have dressed up, as many people judge you by your clothes first. But on the other hand, it was my only jacket. We definitely will not get together with modern ladies obsessed with the fashion industry and care for the looks, and it is better to dot the I's and cross the T's immediately. Yay, verily. The pavement ended, the treetops closed over my head, and the untidy, foliage-covered path went sharply upward. I wonder why they couldn't do a good job of paving a decent road right away. Dig ditches for the drain, decorate the curves. I felt a burning desire to buy a broomstick and improve the local trails. Don't they really care that their park is in such disrepair? The cries of seagulls means that the coast was already very close. As I climbed the hill, I pleasurably breathed in the humid sea air. There was a tall lighthouse looming in the distance, a proud and lonely symbol of a bygone era, a majestic monument to human mastery. Imagine the inspiration with which the architects were beholding their work. Realizing that the lighthouse would survive the centuries, which means they left their mark on history, that they had not lived their lives in vain. A large three-story modern-style restaurant spoiled the beautiful scenery. A huge jeep stood in the shade of the building in the parking lot, looking like its owner had to be a wealthy man. So, my languid, lonely wait was off, and I got so used to it. Ooh, some splashes of color. I like it. The hand on the clock in the hallway was at 6 p.m. That was early, even by my standards. A group of tourists in, a ridiculous, in ridiculous caps didn't even notice me. A large man, apparently the owner of the place, armed with a charming smile, shook my hand. The collar of his yellow shirt was tight around his pumped neck. Behind the counter, there was a busy, pudgy lady in an apron. Aww. At my appearance, she stopped cleaning glasses for a moment and made an inviting gesture toward the barstools that were empty. The people who greeted me seemed welcoming and warm. Looked like there wouldn't be any traditional awkwardness of the first introduction. I mean, unless you call them pudgy to their face. Okay, so we could sit on an empty couch. I really like the uh, interacting. Oh! <laughs> I just wanted to, t to pet the cat. I was like, oh, hi, cat! And I got an achievement called Cat. I like it. Um, I want to go up to the bar. She looks friendly. Probably murder us, but she looks friendly. Sit at the table, please. Come on, honey, sit at the table. Quite a stressful look for our place, I dare say. So... How do I stop this from just autoplaying is the real question. I don't want it to auto-read, so I had thought I, I thought checking it meant it would turn off, but let's see. If I check it, will it stop? But now I can't... There we go. Okay, so where was I? And it's just... It's still going. I just can't get it to stop auto-reading. So you're here for speed dating, ain't you? My name is Renata, and I'm helping with dating tonight. Oh, you know what? There was a tourist here right before you. So stern and gloomy. Thinking about something and scratching his head. I said to him, your glass is so empty, darling. How about another one? And he bulged at me like a lemur. Why would I need another empty glass? See what weirdos roam the world. My whole life still wondering. Oh, of course. Do you want a drink, honey? I would actually settle for autoplay, not autoplaying. Like, I don't know what these do. <laughs> But I'm... I mean, I would think this is autoplay. I'll try that again? I don't know. Um, I'd like that to be a little clearer exactly what it does. Well, I get a drink. I mean, probably getting a cup of tea in this place is... A weird thing to ask. I'll just get a drink. Great bar. 
Achievement. The strong drink burned my throat, and my usual stiffness and tightness faded into the distance. Renata seemed to have fun, too. I listened to a couple of old jokes, smiled back, and pretended to hear them for the first time. It was clear that being warm and friendly was all part of her job, but there was a sense that Renata was speaking completely sincerely. I decided not to abuse the bartender's time, especially since alcohol is not the best idea for a date. I could go up to the bar again, I could go for a walk outside, I could stay in the building, I could talk to the owner. Okay, I'm curious. I shouldn't go to the bar so often. Speak for yourself, honey. Welcome! Is this your first time here? I would have certainly remembered you. It's nice to see such a fine-looking man in a hole like that. My name is Henry Locke, but you can just call me Henry. There's only about an hour left before we start, and I'm sure someone will be late. Make yourself comfortable. If you need anything, be sure to ask me. The living room is yours, and the bar is on me. Renata will make you a cocktail that just makes you want to live here. Nice. I will introduce myself. It is rare that I would approve of the decor in a place like this. There was no modern plastic, no high tech, and not much glass. The furniture was mostly made of different types of wood. Eh. The interior seemed to be something between a saloon from Clint Eastwood movies and a late medieval tavern. The only one who looked out of place was Henry himself in his shiny shoes with his huge hand around his brand new tablet. I was really too early. I gotta figure out a way to make the time pass. Okay, I I know I said I could introduce myself, but I, apparently I just had some inner thoughts and decided to leave. Shouldn't bother him. Well, I'm gonna sit on the couch then. <laughs> I'm gonna stare into the flames. Getting drunk before the date wasn't in my plans, and the climb through the woods made me a little tired. I stayed on the empty couch, noting its excellent quality and its harmony with the interior. I had something to occupy my mind. I couldn't remember the last time I'd gone on a date. Maybe I should think of some sort of a plan in case the conversation doesn't work out. I don't know what kind of girls come here, though. Maybe they're all different. So maybe I should think about myself. How to introduce myself and behave properly? There was a wide mirror in front of one of the walls where I could see the mess on my head. The wind had made a mess of my already bad hair. At least I noticed it. My grandfather used to call that hairstyle an explosion in a macaroni factory, or welcome to my cave. Welcome to my cave? <laughs> After fixing my hair, I examined my look from all angles and went back to waiting on the couch. All right, well, I'm going for a walk. Goodbye, everybody. I like the interactiveness. That, that's pretty nice. I noticed that the wind had increased and the first clouds appeared on the horizon. It looked like a thunderstorm was coming, an exceptionally rare thing in our area. I caught a moment of silence and heard the sound of waves crashing on the rocks and the call of a lone seagull. After all, many residents had never visited this place, never seen the lighthouse, never breathed in the sea breeze. As it turned out, I wasn't the only one who went out to get some fresh air. A man in pants with braces was leaning against the front of the porch, and a young man in a long black jacket reading a book on the cliff. Actually, just give me a second, guys. just want to check something real fast. Okay. Thought there was something funky going on with my OBS, but we good. I quickly wiped the enthusiastic look off my face. Um, okay. I went for a bit of a walk to brace myself. Now we're going on a date. Because I don't think I can walk up there. There's nothing else that's glowing, so... The abruptness of the music stopping is a little terrifying. Time flies so fast, I didn't even notice how the tourists left the restaurant and the ladies took their seats. I quickly ran my eyes over and counted four of them. Someone was indeed late. Renata watched the scene playfully and seemed more interested than the girls. Henry waited until all the guys were back and stepped into the center of the room to loudly greet the crowd.
Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? My name is Henry Locke, and it is my sincere pleasure to welcome you to my restaurant. You will not find a better place in the city to let your mind and body rest. A gorgeous bar, luxurious rooms, authentic surroundings, and, of course, wonderful people are at your service. I'm sure you can't wait to get started, so let me remind you of our rules. First, ladies have their tables. Each couple has ten minutes to talk. You talk about yourself, answer questions, and then pass the floor to your partner. The girls usually start. Is everyone ready? If so, please go to your tables. Use these minutes wisely and do not miss your love. Alright. I'm not sure if there was an age limit on the event, because the first girl didn't seem to be mature enough just judging from the looks. She was sitting on the edge of her chair, with her legs tucked up, wrapped in a pink blouse, and her ridiculous round-rimmed glasses pushed up into her face. I tried to push the chair back as slowly as possible. It seemed that any harsh movement might frighten her away. She only responded by crouching and hiding her hands in the sleeves of her blouse. I noticed the fresh, fresh scratches on her hands. The conversation at the nearby tables began, and between us, on the other hand, there was an awkward silence. Oh, she's cute. Um... Hmm, what should I do here? I'll wait. Um, I was just... Well... Um, hello? My name is Amanda. Oh, don't look at those scratches. My cat, Fluffy, is sometimes a little too wild while playing, but I still love him. I think cats are the cutest animals on the planet. Only my mom disagrees with me. Yesterday, my Fluffy climbed into the laundry basket and ruffled all of her sweaters and blouses. Boy, oh boy. When he hid under my blankets in the morning looking for protection, I just smelled trouble. And seconds later, there was a tirade of anger from the bathroom. I laughed so hard. Do you have a kitty cat? Um... I mean... I... Don't, so... I'll say no, but I have a very warm relationship with my neighbor's cats. Well, thanks to some effort, the communication moved forward. Really, we needed to keep it moving forward, because I couldn't survive a couple more sentences about the cat. Usually you get cats after a breakup or a failed relationship, but not before it hasn't even started. Dang, this guy is super judgmental. <laughs> Um... <laughs> Besides cats... Uh, how about anime? Do you have a favorite anime show? Ooh, of course! These are the most perfect things in the world! How on earth can you not love them? I was watching something about a boy the other day. I just recently graduated from high school, and there's this drama. It's about parents scheduling their son's whole life. For example, they've planned for him what job he is supposed to do, and where he has to study without even thinking about his own needs and dreams. And he's kind, and he respects his mom and dad and doesn't dare to cross them. So he works at a job he doesn't like and studies against his will, until one day he meets a girl. They go to karaoke, and she convinces him to sing. He sings for the first time in his life, and he turns out to have a wonderful voice. He realizes it's something he truly loves. I think plans and goals are illusions. We convince ourselves that we control our own destiny, but a chance encounter, one tiny event can change everything. I agree, but this encounter is more likely to happen on the way to the goal. Maybe you're right, but sitting and waiting for the grass to grow is not an option either. Sure, we are only drifting with our current fate. Uh, I'll do the top one. Sure, if you sit at home and watch cartoons all day, this position is very convenient. As the Chinese say, if you sit on the bank long enough, the corpse of your enemy will float by. Hmm. Didn't I think the same way at her age? 
You don't even know how old she is. Lean forward and take a cat's hair off her sweater. No, do not do that. Um... You have a very nice voice and you're interesting to listen to. Oh, that's so nice! My mom keeps telling me I'm a squeaker. I squeak all the time like a little mouse that even makes her ears hurt. That's why I was so quiet at first. I was really scared to come in here. I almost ran away when I saw the other girls. I'm the tiniest one here. By the way, what brings you to speed dating? Um, an ad in the paper? Loneliness. It's a day off. Some free drinks. Um... I'll be honest. I saw an ad in the paper. I am sure coincidences are not coincidental. The bell rang. It was time to change the person I was talking to. I said goodbye to Amanda and wished her good luck. She waved back and headed to the next table. I like Amanda. She's cute. Later, someone in baggy clothes from the local secondhand shop was coming to me. How do you know that? Dyed hair, bangs covering half her face, and an uncaring stare down to the floor. Oh, I like you. You are cool as heck. I immediately thought of subcultures that I thought had died out decades ago. <laughs> this dude. Not really, it seemed like. It turned out they were hiding on speed dates. Judging by her pale skin, it was rare for the girl to get out of her sanctuary. When she sat down across the table, she flashed me a glance and hid her hands in her pockets. All that was missing was a backpack with K-pop band badges, a fishnet wristband, and a necklace with a peace symbol on it. I don't... I just don't know what to say about this guy. Honestly. Hey there. Um... The one-eyed one in Futurama. Actually, I do kind of see that. <laughs> now that you mention it. Um... Let's just... Can we just be, like, a decent human being? Is that too much to ask? Hi, I'm Hugh. What's your name? Dana. Very detailed and informative. And usually they leave all the hardest stuff for the end. I have to figure something out ASAP, otherwise the remaining nine minutes will seem like an eternity for me. Um... Tell her about my trip to the rock concert. Ask her why she's so quiet. Shrug my shoulders and wait for her to continue. Tell her a secret. I'm worried about the secret but let's go for it. Sounds interesting. I wonder what question she would not answer this briefly. <laughs> um... Sure, what's your favorite music group? Full Out Lol. Okay. A moment later, she asked the question herself. How do you like all these people here? You're my last chance. Uh, nice girls, but we are too different. It's like I'm from another world. You mean here or in general? Well, I did like one silent girl. I wonder how I can tell her that. Um... You mean here or in general? Whatever. There's nothing to talk to me about. Nobody is really gonna like me. Yeah, and of course you have no idea why, don't you? Hmm. How can I approach her? I decided to look around as if ignoring her. Oh yeah, that'll work. We managed to keep it up for eight minutes, didn't we? Um... You say what's on your mind. I mean, it's sincere. That's rare these days. The girl seemed to glance at me for the first time since the conversation began. Maybe it was because of the lights. Or maybe I was just tired. But at that moment, she seemed extremely attractive. 
Well, that was a 180. Her clothes were slightly oversized. Her slouching posture and her gothic makeup didn't let me appreciate her looks or her silhouette. Maybe I'm an optimist or a romantic, but I assumed that a slight change in style would make her a worthy competitor to the other girls. She is gorgeous. She's wearing purple. That's an automatic win in my book. And as my dad used to say, morning is the great equalizer. Brings all the ladies to their common denominator. The bell rang and the men switched tables. Man, you are just... such a catch. Okay, the music suddenly got upbeat. For a moment, I caught a nostalgic feeling from some time in my school days. The next girl sat down upright, her hand folded on the table looking at me attentively. No challenge, but rather with curiosity and interest. In a strict suit, with a neat high hairdo and a white blouse, buttoned up all the buttons, she gave the impression of the ideal girl to meet my parents. The girl who would modestly and patiently answer her father's inquiries, and who would take it upon herself to help her mother in the kitchen. Hey there. My name is Agatha, and I am a doctor. I dare say, my previous vis-a-vis -vis has already used up his entire collection of medical jokes. But if you'd like to crack one, I'm all ears. Laughter and amusement are rare in my work. Pardon me. I've been going on and on about myself. What do you do for a living? Well, if it's not a secret. Or if you don't want to talk about it, we can just talk about something else. Um, sure. Since you asked. That's really awesome. Nowadays, it's rare to meet a person who knows how to create and produce something with his own hands. It's a magical profession. What do you think of the medical profession? Most important profession in the world on an equal scale with a teacher. Uh, it's only a way to make money on people who need help. I've had little experience with doctors. I try to take care of my health. There is no sore that good old whiskey can't cure. Um, I'll do the top one. A peculiar answer. Thank you for your honesty. Often we are asked to do grandiose accomplishments. I am a very small, unremarkable person and just don't know how to do anything else. A crazy, huge world is whizzing around somewhere. I just want to have time to help at least some people in my short life. I'm sorry. I've been drawing too much attention to myself again. She's like Maria Teresa herself. If she says it sincerely, I can go ahead and carve a patterned frame for her portrait right now. I'll hang it in the bathroom and look at it in the morning, reminding myself that there are good people in the world. You gotta be able to keep that kind of gentleness in such a job. I won't be surprised if she actually works as a pediatrician. That would explain a lot. Um... Yeah, ask her what brought her to speed dating. Biology, I guess. Humans are biosocial and herd-like creatures. You always need someone close. Sometimes you just want to lie on the grass, to have a calm and easy conversation, without having to think about the time and daily life. Don't you ever have such desires? I'm thinking about it every time. Sometimes, but after all, it takes a lot to make a man out of a monkey. I can also relax on the grass, if only I had someone who could join me. I would like to lie on a bed, and preferably not alone. Somewhat creepy, but I'm gonna go with it. Agatha looked away for a moment, and I glanced at my watch so she wouldn't notice. She'd think I was just waiting for the bell to ring to get away from her. There was less than a minute left. I needed to squeeze something nice out of myself and end the conversation on a positive note. You are a very kind and pleasant girl. After talking to you, it was like the clouds cleared and the sun came right through. Oof. It's a pleasure to talk to an intelligent person. Thank you. I guess when you do an ECG, a man's pulse would always be quicker. <laughs> um... I'll try this. 
think I was about to answer, but the bell rang and it was necessary to change the pair again. I smiled goodbye. I have to part with her. That is the rules of speed dating. New girl gracefully sat on a chair with her leg up, deliberately moving away from the table. The edge of her dress, the color of a moonless night, barely reached the middle of her seductive hips. Ooh. Okay, apparently he's interested in her, tra like, looks-wise. It took a tremendous amount of strength for me to turn my gaze away. The girl had her hands clasped around her knee and played with her slipper. For some reason, I imagined a weasel hypnotizing her victim with an intricate dance. Thinking about it, I almost knocked my chair over. If she noticed my awkwardness, she did not show it. She changed her posture and moved her chair closer to the table. As she did so, she casually tossed back her luxuriant mane of hair, revealing earrings and a velvet ribbon around her neck. When I sat across the table, she tapped her fingernails on the table and pulled up her wine glass. There was an ocean of femininity lingering in her big brown eyes, which made me forget that I needed to start a dialogue. Isn't she supposed to start? Okay, I will admit she's very attractive. Um... Remove one of the candles burning in the chandelier and place it in the center of the table? Damn. Wink at the bartender? Uh... Sheesh, these are some interesting options. How about hello? What an original and unusual opening. I hope you won't ask me to do the same. But where are my manners? My name is Linda. Linda Blackwood. And yes, I do have that last name. So, what is there to talk about? I haven't been on a date in like 10 years. Um. Uh... Now the ladies pay for dinner themselves, and apparently sex after the date is obligatory. Dang. Um. Wrong guy to ask. This is my first time here as well. Let's improvise. Well, you may start improvising then. I think you're the one to play the man's part. Let's talk about something harmless and uninviting and very serious. We're adults, right? Hmm. Do you have a tattoo? I have a tattoo. Wanna guess what it looks like? Um... Hmm... Maybe an animal. Is it a panther? Wow, that's very close. So you think I look like a wild, ravenous cat who's probably stalking her prey for tonight right now? But of course, I am not going to tell you what kind of tattoo I actually have. And you certainly won't know where it is. The night promises to be a long one, though. So many things might happen. I had no idea where I was even going to end up this morning. First time on a mass date. By the way, do you remember your first time? Hmm. Mm. Prom, slow dancing music, and then the girl whose briefcase you've been carrying. You might have been the only one I've been waiting for all these years. This is personal, I don't think we're that close yet. Not really. I was drunk and there were camera flashes clicking everywhere. Uh, yep. Linda faked a yawn and reached up, stretching her arms upward, causing her breast to pull her dress of the finest silk chiffon threateningly tight. I tried with all my power to think of something as trivial as possible to distract me and keep my mind sober. Linda lifted her glass with three, three fingers and took a tiny sip of wine. She licked the edge of her lips, savoring the taste of the rich drink while looking at me. I noticed the perfect semi-oval mark on the glass, matching the outline of her dark red lipstick. Mm. Try this. <laughs> the way she looks at you, like, The bell rang, and I, trying to maintain gallantry, thanked Linda for the conversation. How quickly time flew by. Was this the fifth girl already? 
Maybe I just got too carried away with the previous gorgeous girl. Okay, I need to pull myself together. The girl in the cap, which is exactly what I would call her, appeared before me. It was the first thing that caught my eyes. Does anyone else really wear such pieces of clothing? Usually girls try to show off their hair. I've even heard that a beautiful hairstyle is a sort of a sex drive for some men. She has it all hidden right now. Was that really the way she wanted to appear on her dates? She looked very athletic and self-assured. Nice, I like you. Um... This is hardly the best place for a headdress. You're the weirdest girl here, but feels like you're something special. I'll just go to my go-to. I'm Amelia. Nice to meet you. Well, you don't really look like someone who dates a lot. Sorry, that was tactless of me. Okay, um, how about I tell you about myself first? I'm a former professional athlete. Now I work as a fitness instructor in downtown city. Next time you're downtown, come by and I will show you what a proper workout looks like. Wow, she doesn't even deny that she didn't come here to date. In fact, I too came here by chance. If you compare me to her, she's even better at playing the role of the occasional attendee than I do. You're impossible to please! I feel we are alike. We're nothing alike. But you're just tired of being alone. That's why you came here, to find your soulmate. But I ain't sure you're gonna find the right person here. It only made it even scarier to talk to her. It feels like walking through a minefield. But should I ask her to calm the situation? How many children would you like? Oh my gosh. Do you like any professional sport? Me? Well, of course, I used to be the state champion runner. Now I work as a fitness instructor and I started to do boxing. So come over to my workouts and you'll see it for yourself. And anyway, I want to know something about you too. Like, what do you do for a living? I'm a serial killer looking for a victim right now. Um, I work as a fitter. I do everything with my own hands. A decent profession. So you can fix up an entire house by yourself. My father was a mechanic. He used to repair rare vehicles, so he never had time for me. Oh, we're just running out of time. Thanks for meeting me. That was cut and dried. We still had a little time, but she clearly let me know that the conversation was over. She turned half-sidedly and glanced at the other couples who were having lively conversations. Yes, in the company of yours, time just flies by. <laughs> she gave me a raised eyebrow. The dates ended, and the guys and girls, as if they were in a high school gym class, went their separate ways. Deny her? So I guess I can choose who I go with now? Um, I really like Amanda, she's cute, but I also really like you, Dana. I think you're too spicy for me. You're very smart, and uh, I don't know if I'm mean enough to be with you and I can't hang out with the bartender girl so I'm gonna go with my gender bent Elliot here without wasting time I headed for Dana trying not to meet the eyes of the other girls Dana and I chose the farthest couch chatting with Dana achievement unlocked I tried to find some change in her behavior but she didn't seem any different on the other hand, the ability to keep the mouth shut is much rarer nowadays than the ability to talk non-stop. Sooner or later the words will run out, and then what? Take out a few to make a constellation out of toothpicks. Um... Sure, let's have some tea. Dana takes the cup of tea and starts vigorously stirring it with a spoon. Do you want to dance? 
Dana skeptically pulled her eyebrows together. Apparently, she took the suggestion as a bad joke. Can we leave? I have a car. I'll be right back. Dana calmly walked through the hall, but I noticed how her fingers, previously hiding in the pockets of her jeans, seemed to be plucking invisible strings, playing the song in her thoughts. I hoped this was a good sign. As soon as Dana climbed the stairs, Henry interrupted the conversation with Renata and moved towards me. Aww, I do believe this evening has turned out to be a great night for both of you. I suppose I can congratulate you? Overall, how did you enjoy the event? How were the girls? What was most pleasant and most unpleasant to you? Main thing is I found my muse and the rest is of no importance. Yes, I love it. I will definitely recommend it to my friends. Free drinks coupled with such a great bartender. How can you not appreciate this? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll recommend it to my friends. Nine out of ten. Oh, um, what was that? Hold on. Okay, for some reason I thought there was dialogue there, but there was not. Oh. Um. Hmm. Ask for an umbrella. Dana got in the driver's seat. She started the engine, and in a few seconds we were out of the parking lot. It wasn't a long drive to the bridge, but in this weather we drove slowly. Soon we arrived at the bridge, or rather to what used to be the bridge. The bridge was destroyed, and our car was stuck in a mud puddle. I decided to check what had happened to the bridge and whether it was possible to pass. When I opened the door, I immediately stepped in a puddle and realized that the concept of waterproof shoes was not used by the salesman in the literal sense. We stopped a few meters from the water, but what I thought was a puddle in fact turned out to be something more grandiose. The river had burst its banks and completely flooded the nearby lowland and the only bridge. Like in a Hollywood disaster movie, we were cut off from the rest of the world by a huge chasm. It was impossible to get to the other side. I heard the smacking of someone's shoes. Probably the driver of the car following us decided to have a look around too. A car honk sounded, scaring both me and the approaching driver. Dana must have missed our dumb dialogues. I turned around. The driver turned out to be Linda, hiding under an umbrella. The only driveway was blocked and there was nothing left for us to do but drive back. I hurried back to the warm car seat. Then we went back to the restaurant. We were the last ones to arrive. Okay, I thought for sure we were going to die there. Renata and Henry gathered everyone in the main room. Renata gave us a towel. Apparently, we weren't the first ones who got completely soaked by the rain. She was obviously going to say something, but because of her modesty, she couldn't make up her mind. Listen, where is Agatha? I already checked upstairs, but I can't find her anywhere. The car is still parked out there, too. Oh, well, hello, new character. Oh, yes, you're right. The twelfth person is missing. But when the dates were over, she was standing right there in the corner with the rest of us. I exactly remember it. Who saw her last? I mean, some of us had tried to leave by car earlier, but came back afterwards. Didn't she go with any one of you? Let's think this over. She's not in the building. Her car is still there. So she must be outside. You're like Sherlock Holmes. Henry slapped the door. She's not on the porch. It's raining so hard only a psycho would go out there. Aw, oh, Amanda. She could have gotten lost. And it's cold and scary out there. We gotta save her now. Nice hat. I've got flashlights in my car. I'll go and look for her. Who will join me? I'm with you. 
The tracks are washed away, but at least I remember the area well. There is almost nowhere to hide. Oh, hello. Hmm. I'm trying to think what a good voice would be for you. Oh, come on. She'll get here by herself. Find something else to worry about. She'll just get a little more wet than usual. I agree with the calf girl. Maybe she's just sleeping in her car. What could go wrong? Anything! Maybe she slipped and fell? Maybe she rolled off a cliff? Boys, it's very cold out there and it's raining badly. Does anyone have an umbrella or a raincoat? Wait a minute. I've got some raincoats here somewhere. Six of them, if I remember correctly. Six. Nice. We can have another four people come along. I'm in. I just wish I had some other boots. I think I can find some. Go on a search, stay inside. I'll go on a search. I am with you. I walked here and had time to memorize the area as well. Okay, I'll wait here. Be careful. Yeah, I will. Find us a cute room in the meantime. Dang. Great. That makes fun of this. Raindrops were drumming on my polyester raincoat, and I could barely hear Justin's directions. The plan was simple. We were to split up to cover more territory, but we couldn't go too far, so we wouldn't get lost and still make it back in time. It was evident that Justin had some experience in leading. However, why he never thought to explain the plan in warmth and silence remained a mystery to me. You! I will go to the parking lot. I have to get the flashlights out of the car. Go to the smoking lounge, go to the cliff. Um... That seems dangerous. Go to the smoking lounge. Afterwards, I will check the smoking lounge. There's a roof over there. It's the only place to shelter from the rain. Alright then. Be careful and don't be out for too long. I have to remind you that cell phones are useless, so don't go too far away. Roger. Tightening my hood, I went to the smoking lounge. I was cold and covered in goosebumps in a matter of seconds, and only my favorite jacket saved the situation. My boots had soaked up water and were making nasty smacking sounds with every step I took. Trying to answer my own question, why the hell didn't I just stay inside? I went to the smokehouse and hid under the roof, throwing off the stupid hood that rustled like a broom made of leaves. Of course, Agatha wasn't in the smoking room. I don't know why, but I left in the trash can and under the benches and carefully examined the floor with the flashlight from my phone. Nothing here. The restaurant grounds were surrounded by a low stone fence, and there were some rough bushes growing behind it. Since I was going back anyway, I decided to walk along the fence looking for clues. Someone had lit a light in one of the windows, and I got distracted and almost fell over. Oh, she was moited. Agatha? She was lying face down, but green coat made no mistake. It was definitely her. The clothing was brutally torn, and there were multiple deep cuts underneath the fabric. I got scared. Fear captivated me. I couldn't move. She's dead. Poor Agatha. Agatha is missing. Achievement. Oh, that's how it ends! Interesting! Ah, I'm on the edge of my seat though, but what happens next? I want to investigate. Okay, I have one question. So it only ought to... S is this like leading right up to investigating the smoking shack? I'm just curious. Yeah, it is. Okay. That's too bad. I was hoping it would have auto-saved right before the last choice. Okay. That is a bit of a downside. 
Because if it had done that, I would have liked to have stayed in and hung out with Dana more. But I'm uh, not going to go through it all again just to see what would have happened if I'd stayed inside. That was really enjoyable, though. I gotta say, I love that you can interact with the environment. I love um, the assets, like the burning flames, the TV. Um, all of that was really nice. The art is really nice. The music fits the, the mood really well. Um, I can't comment on the voice acting, obviously, but the little bit I heard um, in the beginning sounded good. My only critique would just be that the... It would be nice to have more just of a... Make it clear what buttons do what as far as uh, the interface there. And... The difficulty option is nice, but I think allowing you to save when you would like would be a good thing for normal difficulty as well, because it'll make it easier to try multiple endings instead of starting right from the beginning again. But I mean, you could just play on easy to do that, but that's, that's my only critique, really. Everything else I really enjoy. I'm curious if it's, it's kind of... Dr. Deckery in the sense that different people could end up dead and you may not find them. You could end up dying. It'd be interesting to see all the different variations there are, but I like the girls. I don't really like the main character off the bat. He's um, very judgmental and um, kind of full of himself and is a little kind of looks down on women, which I'm not I'm not a fan of, um, but maybe he changes during the course of the story. This is very early, obviously, in the story. So maybe there's some character development there, but off the bat, I'm not a fan of the protagonist. Uh, I really like Dana, obviously, and Amanda's super cute as well. We met a few of the other guys that are there for the dating as well. They seem pretty cool. So yeah, all in all, I had fun. If you guys would like to check out the demo for yourselves, as I mentioned before, I will leave a link to it in the description below. And thank you once again to Vivi Latvia for um, reaching out to me about this. I had a lot of fun with it. Wishing you all the best as you head towards your full release date. And yeah, that is going to do it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for joining me. Until next time, I will see you later.